vaccines help? That's the question. Everyone wants to know, are the vaccines doing good, doing harm? Are they making a difference in the world? So this is going to be not a quantitative analysis, but a meta-analysis. And analyzing whether vaccines work is a very complex question. There are many, many variables and factors in play. Um, you can try to analyze the, the question, the query, the problem in a multiple manner of ways. What I've decided to do is to, to look at the most vaccinated countries in the world. And so I've made the spreadsheet. And what we see here right off the bat is that there seems to be a correlation or relationship between how fully vaccinated a country is and where they stand in the world in terms of their infection rate. So over here in the first column, we see the country and a number by the country. So what that denotes is Seychelles, uh, Seychelles, not sure how to pronounce it. They are the number sixth um, most infected country in the world by infections per million, right? And <clears throat> we can see that um, I've actually made cases per million, cases per thousand. So it's a lot easier to see smaller numbers, correct? And so they're, they're approximately, you know, one, well, 13 out of 100, basically, 14 out of 100, or 138 out of 1,000. Um, you can verify this by, by going over to uh, World Info. What is it called? World Meters. World of Meters, correct, dot info. So if, if we sort by cases per million, we see that they're, they're number six. And that's a very strange thing, you would think, because they have such a high, they're, they're the most vaccinated country in the world. So what's, what's the problem? Um, if we go to <coughs> their timeline, their graph, cases over time, we see, you know, they're, they're very uh, much a late starter in the whole COVID thing. Basically, in the beginning of last year, they didn't have any cases. First cases start popping up in March. Um, by that time, you know, the U.S. was getting hammered. And, you know, it stayed, it stayed very, very low until, until the end of last year. And it takes off. So we expect the vaccine rollout to be around this time frame. And in the case of the uh, Seychelles, the vaccine didn't seem to make a difference. Um, <clears throat> it just kept climbing and climbing. You might, you might say that, uh, you know, scale is important. This is only 15,000 cases, you know, and, and the population of Seychelles is 100,000. So, you know, maybe it's not uh, maybe it's not a valid sample size. Hard to say. Um, but <clears throat> you know, the news doesn't doesn't look very good for Seychelles, uh, despite having a. You know, and you might wonder where I got the vaccination rates, and I got it from John Hopkins by country. Let's do that. See if it pops up. And here is the vaccination progress rate. <clears throat> the race to vaccinate the world. What does this mean? That's what everyone wants to know. What, what does this mean, right? So you can say view all. And um, there it is. Seychelles 68.16. And today's date, by the way, is June. 18th, I compiled the information in this spreadsheet on the 17th yesterday. So we're going to keep 
going down the line, blow by blow, country by country, and try to contextualize each one. Uh, San Marino, unfortunately, <clears throat> there is no weekly change case numbers for, for that country. And I'll show you, so th there's, there's the, um, you know, main page for the coronavirus stuff on Worldometer. But there's an interesting weekly trends page as well. And that gives you sort of the hotspot sort of uh, warnings around the world. You know, you can sort by weekly death change. Um, this is very interesting because what we see, the places that are hotspots right now are basically Africa, the Caribbean, and some islands like Malta. Um, and what we would say, you know, remote regions of the world, Mon Mongolia, Papua New Guinea. <laughs> you know, these are these are very remote places. Um, some of them islands again. But if if you you know what I found is that sorting by weekly change case number percentage is not useful. Um, and it's actually not not extremely useful to to know the cases in the last seven days because seven days doesn't really give you that much of a window into where where the trend is going up or down. Um, however, you know it gives it does give you some insight. You know, Seychelles just continues to skyrocket, as as seen over here. Um, you know, deaths, deaths lag cases by at least two weeks, maybe a month, actually. So, you know, and, and the population size is over there. So let's, let's look at the next country, um, besides San Marino, Israel. Israel's kind of, um, if you're a pro vaccine person, maybe this is a case in your favor because what we see here in Israel, and Israel, how you know, it's not it's not a very big country. Uh, if we sort twenty one, and they have nine point three million people, so it's a lot more than Seychelles. But what does it tell us? It tells us that you know they're one of the earliest countries to get the vaccine, aside from the U.S. and Maybe if we look at the case numbers, it sort of it sort of plateaus towards the end of March, right? However, we see that your you know the pro vaccine case here. I mean, not pro vaccine, but the case that vaccines make a difference or is contingent on that this peak right here would continue to skyrocket up and up and up if there was no vaccine. So you have to ask yourself, is this a natural occurrence? Would have this happened with a vaccine or without a vaccine? And I would argue that, you know, the peak is the peak, right? You know, it, the peak was January before the vaccine rollout. And what we see is, you know, t a typical decline, you know, just like the other curve. In in actuality, this this slope, this roll off, is less steep than this one, right? And that's actually pretty commonplace. You know, the the third wave was is typical. If if it's a four four wave country, what happens is the third wave is generally the highest, and also it drops off the steepest. So this is wave one, wave two, wave three, wave four. So, you know, you know, I, I can understand that, uh, you know, there, there is a coincidence in that the vaccines overlaps the plateauing of cases in Israel, but the reality is it probably would have happened in any case, right? So, Let's 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 keep going. Uh, Malta, Malta, kind of kind of a similar story. Um, they're they're a very small country, right? This, this is six hundred cases, 
max the height of this graph, 600 people, right? And I mean, it, it, it doesn't really tell us too much. They have one, two, three, four, five. They're just one of these places that it, it's so small that um, the affection is, it, it looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, you know, peaks or waves, but in actuality, it's probably just one smooth wave like like this shows and it plateaus in may which is very late i don't know when the, their their rollout was but in any case uh their case numbers are were pretty low uh, i put you know pet test oh the other thing is test per person um the world meter shows this in tests per million. So some some countries have, you know, three million tests and one million people. So let, let's take Mongolia. Um, Mongolia is a, is, is a case, well, should we, should we do Bahrain? Fine, you can do Bahrain. Bahrain. Bahrain is a Middle Eastern country. They don't have very many people. You know, the max of this graph is 4,000 people. They started kind of late, uh, late, early, early spring, late summer, or sorry, early summer, <laughs> late spring. And, uh, you know, it just kind of peters along. They're probably one of those countries that shut their borders. Um, the cases actually just keep climbing and climbing despite the vaccine rollout. And, you know, Bahrain, you know, they're, they're the fifth most vaccinated country in the world, 53%, right? So I guess that didn't really make a difference. All right, continuing on to Mongolia. Mongolia, it doesn't seem that the vaccine helped. Um, Mongolia, of course, they, they shut their borders immediately, right? And... <clears throat> sort of for the first six months, they were basically the least infected place on earth. If you recall, if you were following, you know, World of Meter and other, other charts at the time. So they, they're getting smashed. I mean, both Bahrain and Mongolia, Chile, uh, Ur Uruguay, UAE, Maldives, Maldives, Seychelles, these places are getting smashed okay in, we're, we're talking thousands of cases per million right you know other places remote places iceland 17 right israel 14 we we talked about israel again you know the the wave is over so the wave coincide the wave being over coincides with the vaccine rollout so it's very indeterminate at best um, with Israel. With these countries, uh, you know, it's not making any difference. Despite the, the high vaccination rate, um, these places are getting smashed, smashed, okay? Uh, Mongolia, Chile. What's going on in Chile? Oh my God, it's terrible. It's like 10,000 cases per day max, right? Um, they're they're going through third th like waves three and four at the same time. It's a disaster. Okay, UK. Ah, uh, UK. So you know UK. It's like Israel in that they peaked. You know in December. It drops off. It starts dropping off. Here's here's the vaccine rollout. Bang, 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 bang. So you have to ask yourself, is this a natural progression? Is this sort of natural herd immunity or, you know, a wave dying off? Or is it the vaccine? You can't you can't really say, right? You can't say one way or the other. I, again, you know, I would argue since this is third wave, third waves tend to roll off pretty steeply and Unfortunately for, for England, the cases are going up. They're not going down. They're going up, right? And where where are they? 
they're they're forty five percent vaccinated. So let, let's go to a really big data set that would be the United States. You know, this thing never ends here. We're one of the first places to get it. Um, it's hard to analyze the U.S. because the, the, the it's such a big country, and on top of that, it's federalized. So every state is basically a mini country when it comes to looking at the COVID situation here in the U.S. Uh, overall, you know, the the U.S. looks like the world because, like like the world, there is you know varying strategies in terms of vaccine rollout, in terms of lockdown in terms of mask usage in terms of social distancing contact tracing and and testing so you know you're looking at you know six different factors and and basically you know you could argue uh since you know the rollout um we have seen a decline in cases yes that's true but again um it's very also likely the case that, you know, the wave was dying off, you know, at the end of winter, at the end of the year, and it started to decline. You know, basically all the places that never had it before got it by this point, um, except maybe like Vermont, you know, and v Vermont being the most vaccinated, you know, place in the United States. Um, we should we should look at Vermont because because of, you know the high they're eighty percent vaccinated. So what's going on in Vermont? So since since the vaccination rollout, let's 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 call it February March. Uh, you know it, it went up it went up and up and up. It's a very small state like <laughs> max three hundred ceiling here height. It starts going down in early mid April and what we have I mean basically Vermont just never really got infected <laughs> so in terms of active cases um, look I mean they, they just never that's not good because you know you, you would expect with the vaccine rollout by this point in mid April these people are you know halfway vaccinated right at least 40 percent and uh it it came up again so it you know during the rollout and it goes down so to to me there, there doesn't seem to be a very strong cor correlation overlap uh coincidence between vaccine rollout and case numbers right it doesn't matter where you're talking in the world hungary so where, where does hungary stand you know they 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 are number 28th most infected country in the world 44 percent rollout cases per million low deaths low total cases low total deaths is pretty high you know, it's double digits per 100,000, but the highest here is, unfortunately, you know, for Seychelles and Seychelles. So, so, it, so it's going on in Hungary. Um, they didn't, they had, you know, average, you know, one test per person. And, uh, wow. Well, unfortunately, it, you know, the, the, there's another peak. There's another peak during the rollout, right? And then it goes down. So they have, they basically had two waves very late. So their first one was sort of the peak for the world at the end of the year. Uh, they peak at that point, they go down, the peak goes down. You'd, you'd expect the rollout to be around here. Um, during the rollout, it just peaks again, and then it goes down. So they're in wave two. You know, be interesting to see where they go, but not looking good uh, for the case that vaccines make a difference. So let, let's keep going. Uh, Qatar, Qatar, Qatar. And, uh, you know, like other rich Middle Eastern Gulf states, 
they tended to close themselves off. It didn't really help. I guess they had some travelers and you know, we, we just see a total gentle uptick in uh, cases. Fortunately, during the rollout, it, the, the slope increases. So the number of cases increases during the rollout, and then it dies off. So is this die off because of the vaccine? Or is it just a natural roll off? Hard to say. Um, you know, their peak... <clears throat> was in um last year in the middle of last year and uh not not a great correlation you know so you'd expect that this number would if if vaccines worked that this would just stay flat not increase not increase not increase but it, it increased so if you are making the argument the vaccines make a difference, then you can only point to this decline here, but you have to ignore all of this, all of this, right? It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Uh, here, here's Iceland. You know, it's a, uh, it's a very isolated case. This, this almost doesn't count. It's, it's like 150 people's max ceiling for cases you know let's let's go, let's go active cases it's a little more so um big peak here big peak here and then uh basically two waves you know it fluctuates uh you know what what is this um basically their baseline noise level here and then vaccine rollout and then they're back to baseline. So really hard to say, right? But they are extremely vaccinated, you know, 40%. UA UAE. <coughs> um, okay, so what do we have? Just basically climbs, climbs, climbs. Case numbers. New case numbers. 5,000. Uh, it, you know, it does go down, but it's still high. They're, they're, they're still getting smashed. You know, like if the vaccine is making a difference, it's not helping. Um, <clears throat> so infected. Wow. It's pretty bad. Boom, boom. January, beginning of the year. Starts to go down, uh, goes up. You know, this is a very serious climb during the rollout that's pretty bad goes down some maybe this is because of the vaccine oh no well then it goes back up and it's climbing you know their their weekly change numbers for this week is only a one percent increase so maybe it's starting to level off but the case numbers are, are very high right weekly cases per million 1500 deaths that lags cases you know and they're, they're they're a country that you know just doesn't have a lot of cases per thousand or or deaths per thousand k um they've got a ton of tests you know they're, <laughs> they're five tests per person right um kind of ridiculous does does make the case that you know testing doesn't really influence things at all uh i just gotta keep moving you know mexico it's, uh, sorry, Monaco, not Mexico. We'll get to Mexico later. Uh, Monaco, obviously, uh, very, very kind of kind of isolated, very wealthy Western European country. Uh, they, they have their peak <coughs> in February. You know, it goes down. Is it because of the rollout? Is it because of a natural progression of the virus taking its course? Hard to say, right? Um, the kind of like mini, mini, mini wave, mini wave two, wave three, wave four. And, you know, sort of the roll off is sort of a gentle one. You, you'd kind of hope that, you know, a vaccine would dramatically decrease, decrease cases, but it's, it's a, you know, it's a smooth roll off. It's more than 45 degrees here, but 
<clears throat> you know, well, you know, the degree doesn't matter, but since I've got all these things scaled pretty much the same horizontally, it should tell you something. So, um, <clears throat> you're, <clears throat> excuse me, I need some water. Uruguay is, um, is a case where vaccination doesn't seem to make a difference at all. Um, they're, they're kind of a moderately high infected place overall in terms of since the beginning of the pandemic. And the weekly numbers, you know, the weekly change numbers here, they're, it's just as bad as it's ever been, okay? And, you know, 16th most infected country in, on Earth. Uh, they are, uh, let's see, where are they? They're right here, 38%. You know they're very they're one of the most vaccinated places but what, what's what's the situation the actual situation is that the the vex uh, the virus is just worse than it's ever been and aside from this unusual you know this is probably some reporting error or lag in error um lag lag in reporting being <clears throat> done on the same day at some point it's pretty much as bad as it's ever been. Um, you know, they just peaked, you know, a couple of weeks ago, basically. And finally, it's subsiding. Uh, we don't know if it's going to come back here and then bounce back up. We don't, we don't know it's going to happen. So it's basically wave one because they started in earnest in March. Well, let's say be middle of February. And then boom, boom. It's like, okay, so what's going on? Uh, why isn't the vaccine helping? Singapore, uh, Singapore, you know, they got it kind of early, like a lot of East Asian countries. They mitigated it pretty well, like a lot of East Asian countries, uh, despite not having a vaccine. Singapore is, is kind of autocratic in terms of its style of governance. Um, it's not socialist, but it's probably the most autocratic democratic society you can think of. So, you know, they, they had strict rules, you know, curfews, lockdown, um, et cetera, social distancing. So they, they, they dealt with it pretty well um, because social isolation, you know, I, I would consider social distancing, lockdown, um, curfews all of those things bas basically variations on isolation right so if you isolate yourself from other people who are infected you're not going to get infected that's just the bottom line so you know whether you like lockdown or restrictions um regulations you know i don't you know it's not to say i don't care you know i do i do care like your quality of life matters economic activity matters but in terms of the virus it does help. Um, so basically, that's what they did. They dramatically decreased the infections or active cases with those restrictions, those isolation orders. And basically, the vaccine, you know, rollout, um, you could say it made a difference, but it doesn't make a difference because. It, they kept it basically to a baseline noise level here, and it continues to do so. If anything, it's increased slightly since the vaccine rollout, right? Is it because people are more relaxed? Because, you know, oh, you yeah, know, we got vaccinated, so we can just go out and have fun. We can do, you know, shopping, eating out, etc., concerts mass congregations i don't know um but there's there's not really a relationship between vaccine rollout and case numbers in the case of singapore and this you know this continues to be the case over and over again uh, maldives look at this there it's like worse than it's ever been um you know not a very big country of course it's in the middle of the indian ocean or pacific um indian ocean Right. So, it's, you know, it's like 3000 miles north of uh, Madagascar. Um, it's and Seychelles is sort of very 
much closer to um, Sri Lanka, but you know, they're both Indian Ocean Island countries, as bad as it's ever been, um, unfortunately. And they're, again, highly vaccinated, right? So, so we end up in Serbia. Ah, um, oh shoot. I did not mean to do that. Recently closed. I don't want to come back. So they, they had, they're, they're kind of like Europe. Mini peak, mini peak, wave three, wave four. So again, kind of like Israel, you have to ask yourself, is, is the decline in case numbers a consequence of the vaccine or is it a natural progression of, of, a, of a wave, of a virus? And that's for you to decide. So you can argue either way. But, you know, if it's the case that, again, that the vaccines make a difference, why would you see like a huge uptick in case numbers during the rollout? Right. So that, that's it for, you know, the highest uh, vaccinated countries in the world. I decided to also, you know, look at the biggest populations in the world, because sometimes bigger numbers gives you a higher resolution uh, uh, image of, of the problem. You know, you know, the United States is the only one out of these big countries that have high vaccination. So everyone else on this list, you know, sub, you know, 10% roughly or lower. And despite, despite um, having not va been vaccinated, these countries are also, ex with the exception of Brazil and the United States, the lowest infected countries in the world. So while you see again, the highest vaccinated countries happen to be the most infected countries in, on the planet. The lowest, biggest countries in the world happen to be the lowest infected countries in the world, right? Um, I didn't, you know, China, of course, you know, I, I just put LOL for all the numbers because, you know, they're, they're, they're just lying, right? Um, you know, India India's kind of uh, worrying because they're going to catch up to us pretty soon, um, vaccine or not. You know, they, they don't have their, their, what's their vaccination rate? I, I don't know. It's extremely low. Um, it's, it's like way, way, way down here. Um, India, hmm? In Indiana, funny. So they're, they're 4%, you know, vaccinated, right? Um, it's not looking good. You know, I don't, I don't think there's anything they can do. Obviously, uh, their, their rollout, uh, I'm sorry, their, their mitigation strategy for um, the virus, because they, they did get it very early. You know, they, they got it um, around here. And the India COVID beatdown, as it's, you know, been popularly named on TikTok, kind of worked. I mean, it, it worked to a degree. Um, they had severe lockdown, right? Like complete isolation of people in their homes with their families and nothing else. And, um, you know, interestingly, China, you know, they did that too. But unfortunately for you know, China, the, the reason why they had an explosion in Wuhan is because they isolated people in tall high-rise apartment buildings with shared septic and HVAC and air, essentially. So once you lock one person in an apartment complex, you infect everyone in the apartment complex. And that's basically what happened in Wuhan to the you know, best that I can determine, having watched you know, thousands of videos of um, you know, CCP police and red arm, red, red arm band um, para police people, you know, barricading people into apartment buildings via welding, uh, dump trucks of gravel and, and the like. So in the back to India, they they the case numbers basically uh, kept, you know, kind of low until 
until summer of last year and then you know it's oh no it comes up you know you can't lock down people forever and um then it subsides you know thankfully but you 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 just can't dodge a bullet you know no matter how slow you can slow the bullet down if you if you can't move out of the way you're gonna get hit and hit they did you know i mean it's it's terrible it's like a disaster um so china india united states i mean it, it's sort of similar situation you, you just can't you can't dodge it you know it's like what are you gonna do you can't move out of the way and when i say move out of the way isolate i mean isolate yourself forever so you know this virus it infected the whole planet you know, like all viruses do, essentially, but just happens to be extremely contagious, pretty lethal. Um, I think it's getting slightly less lethal. Um, people like to say, oh, this, this virus only kills, you know, 0.05% of people, but in actuality, it, it, it kills like 4 or 3% of people that it infects. Um, you know, so... At least, at least it's going down. So they're they're coming off their you know, wave 1.5. And you know, unfortunately, they're going to have to go through a wave, you know, 2.5, 3, and 4. So let let's um you know let's let's keep going. Indonesia, uh, they are, wh wh where are they? They're they're the fourth biggest country on the planet. Okay, and basically they they are in wave one um in <clears throat> excuse me despite you know being you know a huge population they're they're spread out on many many islands and they're kind of isolated because you know indonesians tend to like indonesia they they're they're one of the lowest you know expat um populations you know in, if you had to do a ratio between indigenous um population versus expat population I, i'm sure indonesia would be one of the highest ratios um there's just not many very indonesians abroad and so for the you know for for that reason i would expect there are not that many um people inbound right expats living inside of indonesia from foreign countries and they, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure what their travel restrictions were like, um, but they sort of, you know, managed, you know, okay, you know, despite not having a lot of technology, um, they, you know, they, what do they do for tests, right? They, nothing, like no tests, <laughs> um, zero, what's the actual number, the actual number for tests that they performed total tests you know they they did 66,000 tests per million right that's the actual number they're doing a you know they're doing pretty good for you know deaths per million cases per million so they're they basically are just getting started right um so it'll be interesting to see where they are they just don't have any vaccination they're they're 1.3 vaccinated whoop 4.3 Pakistan, very, very similar. Um, you know, these places, I guess no one's really interested in going to Pakistan. I don't, I don't know. So they didn't manage quite as well. Um, they probably didn't have COVID beatdown like India did. So unfortunately, they just, they're going at the end. They're at the end of wave three. Okay. Um, Brazil, Brazil is like a unique case. Um, they're, they're an example of what not to do, and what not to do is nothing, because India is uh, 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 Brazil is is the worst place in the world. I mean, they're just horrible. Um, look at this. Currently infected, 1.3 million, and basically, you could argue that th they're the only country on the planet to have a wave five. So one, maybe two, three, four, five, six. I mean, let's, let's get rid of this one. So one, two, 
three, four, four and a half, five, you know? So if you do nothing, right? If you if you don't isolate, if you don't test, tests don't do anything. If you don't contact trace, contact tracing doesn't do anything. If you don't vaccinate, if you don't do anything, you're gonna get completely destroyed. Um, they they have Brazil, <coughs> they have, you know, the highest cases um, per million currently, like at the current state, you know, this is an extreme example. They, they, they compare with some really bad places, you know, Mon Mongolia, Chile, Bahrain, UAE, Ur Uruguay, poor Uruguay. Um, <clears throat> and they have sustained, you know, damage, right? You know, ever, ever since the beginning of the pandemic, um, their case numbers, their deaths, some of, some of the highest in the world. And <clears throat> it's just, you know, um, not a good strategy. I would say so if we if we go back to the main page and we see cases per million uh where are they well they're actually not that high hmm interesting deaths per million they're they're number 10 um they're not in you know hundreds of thousands of cases per million but i'm sure they'll get there you know um so you know keep Keep doing nothing, and that's what you get. Um, Nigeria, Nigeria is uh, you know the most populous country in Africa, <clears throat> soon to be the most populous country in the world in uh, 40, 50 years or so, <clears throat> more than China. And um, what what is their population? Just kind of curious. So they they are wow to to. 210 to 11 million and we're almost done folks so just stick with me and basically they're you're in wave two um you know it's like it is what it is bangladesh kind of kind of like pakistan you can call it bangladesh east pakistan for all, all you care um you know it's kind of like better than doing nothing brazil but Cases are gone up. Um, Russia, Russia's numbers are a little suspect. I, I, because of earlier reporting in Russia, I think they basically did not report anything from the beginning of the pandemic till basically this point. Um, maybe these numbers are honest here, um, but fortunately, <clears throat> you know, Russia seems to not be able to you know mitigate very well um you know i i don't know what's going on inside of russia in terms of policy in terms of vaccine rollout um well we do know that right so they're 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 trying to get up there um the the russian sputnik vaccine seems to be um by western standards not very efficacious or effective Oh, <clears throat> they say that about the Sinovac <clears throat> vaccine from China as well. But, you know, who knows? So I'm going to wrap it up with Mexico and, and Japan. Um, Japan's a very interesting case. So, you know, Mexico, the United States' neighbor, uh, you know, not looking great. But they, they seem to manage, you know, the winter peak, the winter roll off. Um, it seems to be coming up again, unfortunately. So they're going to go into wave three. Um, again, you know, the United States, we're in our fourth wave. <clears throat> Hopefully the fourth wave is the last wave. Um, there's probably going to be a, like a wave five, you know, across the world in most populations. It, it'll probably be, you know, like a mini wave, like half of the previous wave, I suspect, because basically it's infected the whole planet and um <clears throat> we're gonna just <coughs> ooh, approach you know natural herd immunity so J japan um <clears throat> japan is a case where you just um where you have people you know do the mit mitigation for you um people 
you know, they did, you know, declare kind of lockdowns in major cities like Tokyo. But Japan, you know, is a very interesting case because it's basically half the population of the U.S. stuffed into, you know, New England or the size of California or Texas, whatever. But, you know, only 20% of that because 20% of Japan is uninhabitable. You know, it's forested and mountainous. So you can't, you know, habitat. You can't have a habitat in there, human habitat there. So one of the densest places on the planet. Um, they do remarkably well, you know. Yeah, and it's because the only thing you can say that's different about Japan than the rest of the world is that they use masks. You know, there, there's a very high usage of masks. They didn't do the social distancing because it's impossible to do the social distancing. So there's really no isolation going on. Um, there's really no contact tracing. There's no vaccination. Um, you know, they're like 4% vaccinated, I believe, at the, at the moment. Let's see what they are. Uh, six. Okay. And basically, they don't have testing. They're, they're one of the... Where, where, where's their tests? Um, like nothing. Like 100... 100,000 per million. So what does that end up being per person? Like zero, essentially. Like if you want to, you know, increase increase this a bit to decimal to decimal one, you know, point, point 0.1 tests per person, right? So like one test for every 10 people, essentially. Um, so, it, you know, no, no testing. So what's my, you know, final conclusion? Um, basically, it doesn't seem to be a relationship between vaccine rollout and infections. In case, uh, actually, it's just the opposite. You know, the more vaccinated you are, the, the more infected you've been or are becoming. And, you know, the, the, in terms of the largest populations in the world, the vaccines probably won't make a difference you know we'll have to wait and see because a lot of these places have a ways to go you know Bang bangladesh pakistan india to some extent indonesia all these places you know have a ways to go you know russia mexico us brazil they've sort of gone through it all and you know unfortunately the vaccine i mean even if it did make a difference you'd have to You'd have to say it's a little too late, you know, it's like a dollar day late, dollar short kind of deal. And so everything, all the narrative, you know, about the, the vaccine rollout, I'm just going to say it's wrong. You know, the, the vaccines don't seem to make a difference and they never did and they probably won't. So that's all I have to say.